our girl Ariel from The Little Mermaid has been through the trenches and back. Like some people love her go get a girl attitude. And on the other side, they're like, sit down. <laughs> which to be honest, when you're running to an evil sea, which I get why you need to get told to see, sit down. But that would be the reason to get told to sit down. And not the fact that she gave up her voice because everybody has the right to give up whatever they want when it comes down to love. If they have anything that they're willing to sacrifice, if something's worth it to them enough for their dream or for love, then they can do it. It's their choice, right? Or not. That's another conversation though, too. Because to be honest, some things, some people do need to know. There are certain things, obviously, you don't give up. They're like, guys, you don't give up your morals. <laughs> like, like that goes without saying, right? I hope you don't give up your morals. You don't give up your family members unless they're insane. But I don't, um, that's a whole, I'm literally getting into a conversation that I'm not even trying to get in right now. Like I'm not even trying to get into that conversation. <laughs> Hi, it's Maria, and welcome back to the princess series. All right. So the little mermaid Ariel has literally been through the trenches and back. Like guys, I promise you when I was watching the film again, I could hear everybody's voice in my head just saying. She wasn't some little hoe mermaid <laughs> that married a guy when she was 16 that she never had a conversation right. with three days after meeting him. But, uh, but Little Mermaid, I mean, the songs are great, but do not give your voice up for a man. Hello. Wow. And I was like, oh my gosh, let me just enjoy this film. So, I mean, the question really does come down to it. Was it a bad thing that the Little Mermaid gave up her voice? Because that's what the controversy stems around, her giving up her voice. Did she give it up for a man? Is it okay that she did? So if you guys remember, in the beginning of the film, Ariel talks about wanting to be human. It's like the first thing you find out about Ariel. So while everybody else is talking about Ariel has the most beautiful voice, where's the girl she's supposed to be singing? She was out somewhere looking for gizmos and thingamabobs. I've got gadgets and gizmos aplenty. I've got who's it's and what's it's galore. And everybody was like pressed about her voice. She just wanted to be human. If you watch the plot continue, you'll find out that while she wants to be human, she also falls in love with a guy. And guys, it's a fairy tale. It's Disney. Love at first sight does exist in the Disney world. <laughs> like, it's still a fairy tale. We can't just throw that out the door. Anyway, she sees this guy, Eric. And Eric, Prince Eric, he is about to die. He is, you know, not really. He said he keeps telling this guy, he's like, I will know the girl when I see her. Like, I'll know the love of my life. I'll know who my wife is when I see her. And his advisor is like, Prince Eric, like, you need to be getting married, yada, yada, yada. Long story short, Prince Eric is uh, drowning because the boat goes down. And Ariel uh, literally saves him. And what's interesting is what Prince Eric remembers the most about Ariel is not even just her looks, but on top of her looks, what he remembers above her looks is her voice. The man becomes interested in the girl with the voice. Part of your world. A girl, she had the most beautiful voice. Then you got Ursula, the evil sea witch, who's literally trying to get the Little Mermaid's voice. She wants to get her voice, possess her voice and use her voice. And Ariel doesn't know this yet, of course, but the evil sea witch knows. And the evil sea witch knows that the Little Mermaid wants to be human. She knows that. So she's going to use this against her. And she's basically going to plot up a way, like Little Mermaid, you can get your little dream of being a human and you can also get your dream of falling in love with a guy. But it comes with a twist. I need your voice. You got three days. Make the prince fall in love with you. And then if he falls in love with you, true love's kiss, you can get your voice back. If you realize this moment, this is the moment where everybody's like, oh my gosh, this is why I don't watch the film. But this to me is what makes the film the film. Little Mermaid says, okay, take my voice. She'd rather be human, right? She'd rather be human. Take my voice. I'd rather fall in love. Which ends up coming down to, oh my gosh, clearly love comes with sacrifice. Like true love, if it's not just with yourself, if you're talking about love with any other party, it's going to come with some type of sacrifice. And for the Little Mermaid, giving up her voice was worth it enough. Because here we go. To the Ursula, to the Ursula, to the Sea Witch, the Little Mermaid was nothing without her voice. Ursula was like, there's no way for the prince to fall in love with you without the voice. To Ariel, she was like, nah, this man can fall in love with me still. Like, I'm still that girl without my voice. She's like, my identity is not in my voice. Ursula viewed Ariel as her voice and she miscalculated. 
because clearly the man ends up falling in love with her without the voice. But if you notice too, before Eric has this revelation, he's still interested in the girl with the voice too. For Eric, he has the real girl in front of him when Ariel shows up without a voice. She's awkward, she's quirky, she's cute, and he likes her, but he's like, where's that girl with the voice though? And it takes his advisor reminding him like, Prince Eric, you need to know like the real thing is better than a fantasy. And the moment Eric is basically about to just be like, you know what, whatever, you're right. I actually like this girl, I'm gonna go for it. Ursula realizes she miscalculated and she has to enchant Eric with the voice of Ariel. The girl, the, the voice, not Ariel, but the voice. He had Ariel, but the voice. I was like, oh snap, this is deep. Because to me, it's like everyone, the whole premise was a, the, off the fact that this voice everyone wanted. Everybody wanted to possess, everybody wanted to use. And for Ariel, it was something she was willing to give up with ease. You see, Ariel's gift didn't make Ariel who she was. Ariel knew who she was without her voice. So for Ariel, giving it up for three days was fine to her. She really believed that she could have a guy fall in love with her without her voice and that everything would work out. And technically it worked for her. It's just the evil sea witch seeing what was going on. So she had to enchant Prince Eric. But let's say she didn't see that in time. The Little Mermaid would have had the prince and she would have had her voice and everything would have worked out. <laughs> Brief rant on how crazy Ursula is. Like Ursula was so manipulative. That lady was dark. Like she knew. She said, Little Mermaid, I'm going to steal your voice. I'm going to possess it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to have your father. You're going to, your father's going to fall. Like I'm going to become the witch of the sea, like it was all gonna work out for her. Like she really had to enchant Prince Eric just to get that man away from Ariel. Like er Prince Eric, that moment, guys, it was enchantment. Anybody who says that he just looked over and found a new girl, guys, she put a enchantment on him. Like I literally get so confused when people say anything otherwise. I'm like, did you watch the same movie I watched? End of the rant. But I mean, the question comes down to, okay, was that such a problem that she gave up her voice? For the world, it was like, that's your gift. That's the best thing you have. Like, why would you give that away? But for Ariel, she's like, guys, it's just my voice. Like, I can give it up. It's not my identity. And I know everybody has a different scale for what's worth and what's not. And I know people are like, it's just principle. Never give up anything for a man. But I want to challenge that. Like, what's the likelihood that you're not going to give up something that you care about for something else you care about? Because it comes to a matter of weighing out something. It's like, I actually want this more than I want that. Or I actually care about this more than I care about that. I mean, I think we all have that. We all have that scale. We all have what we're willing to give. For some people, certain people who come in your life, you ain't willing to give nothing up for them because they're just not worth it. Some other people and for some of that, that same person, somebody else can come in your life and something that you would have never gave up for anybody else you're willing to give up. But the best part is, is it was a contract. It wasn't like she was giving up her voice for the rest of her life. Now, technically, if it failed, yeah, she was. But it still comes back down to the evil sea, which was evil, guys. She manipulated this person. She manipulated Ariel. So she did get her there. But let's just say in an ideal world, if the principle comes down to people, why they wouldn't watch The Little Mermaids because she gave up her voice for a man. Well, wasn't that her choice? Didn't she have the right to give her voice? It was her voice, her voice to give, her voice, her voice to use, her voice to whatever. And Ariel was the only person who was like, guys, I'm more than my voice. A prince can fall in love with me without my voice. I'm still that girl without it. And Ariel bet on herself. She didn't bet on her voice. And Ariel was right because the prince did love her without the voice. And what's kind of cool is by the end of the movie, the prince ends up falling in love with the girl without the voice and then getting the mermaid with the voice at the same exact time, like it works out for like both parties. I think the little mermaid is getting put on such a hard like judgment system. It was like, guys, like she wanted to fall in love and she wanted to be human. Like that's what she wanted. A lot of us want things and we're willing to give something else up for it. To everyone else, she gave up her most prized possession, but to her, she was like, okay. All right, I want the gizmos and thingamabobs. Her most prized possession was her dream of being a human. That was her most prized possession. And she was willing to do anything to obtain that prized possession and to just like experience it. Who hasn't sacrificed something for love? Is that really like we not allowed to teach that sometimes love comes with sacrifice? No, I get it. Like the, <laughs> I think the real lesson here should be Watch out for those crazy people who manipulate you, okay? The evil sea witch was manipulating the little mermaid, okay? She needed somebody to tell her, nah, we don't do that. 
we don't do that. And technically, the her, her friends tried to, but she was obviously really mad at her dad. Which is honestly another conversation on its own. Um, But also, I love, it's like, what I love about film and TV and characters is like, they're supposed to have flaws, you know? And The Little Mermaid's flaw really was the fact that she was so blindsided by what she wanted that she was willing to give up something else for it. But I really do believe on top of all of that, though, a message that we can learn as an audience is that we have always viewed the voice of Ariel as Ariel. And it's like, no, I'm more than my voice is I think what she would tell us if she was a real person. <laughs> but yes, characters can have flaws and that's what makes film film. When did it become bad for characters to have character flaws? Like, I'm sorry, guys, I'm not interested in these princesses who are perfect from the jump, who have every right answer, who do the right thing. No, the Little Mermaid did do the wrong thing by going to an evil person to get what she wanted. But she didn't do the wrong thing in giving up something for love. You know what I'm saying? Those are two different things. The wrong thing was going to an evil witch to get your dream. But what we can't say was right or wrong is her giving up what she thought was worth it enough to get her dream of being a human and to get the guy or get a chance to get the guy, mind you, because she had a, the prince had to fall in love with her too, guys. And he did. A revelation rant. You see, I just, whoa, okay, I think I just got a new thought. Did the Little Mermaid have a love for singing or was it just something she was good at? Because there is a difference. While we can respect somebody for being so talented and gifted and skilled, that doesn't mean that that's their love. Ariel's love was the idea, this desire of being human. And then eventually this man, like Prince Eric, those were her loves. What she was good at was singing. So she was willing to give up what she was good at for something she loved. Oh my gosh, yeah. See, I'm telling you, I just keep having new revelations on this film. I was like, oh my gosh, The Little Mermaid was really showing us like, I gave up my skill, not my love. She never gave up her love for something else. She gave up a gift. That was really a contract for three days anyway, mind you. It wasn't like she had to give it up forever. I mean, unless it failed and it did fail. But this is Disney. There was a happy ending, so it worked out. But in her mind, while she was making that decision, she's a flawed character. She's like, yeah, I'll give up my voice for three days. I'll get my voice back and I'll get what I wanted. She thought she could have it all. No, you can't have it all when you're dealing with an evil witch. We know this. End of my revelation rant. <laughs> but anyway, I really do think that the Little Mermaid has been through it. And I just wanted to kind of get on here and maybe give another side as to why she did what she did and what her mindset could have been while she was doing what she did. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And let me know if there's anything else that I should talk about or I didn't cover in this uh, you know, video. And let me know if you agree with me or if you have feel like that's a new revelation that you never knew about. And until next time, I will see you guys on our next Princess for the Princess series. Bye for now.